Hello, hello. So, you might be wondering, why should I even be using the catalog at all? If I've got my pictures sorted into folders on my computer, then I can simply find them just by clicking through and uh, finding their physical file location, and that's that. Well, the catalog helps us in different ways as it makes it faster and it organizes it for us much better. Let's say I want to view files by the physical location where I took them. I want to view files by the date that I took them, or I could find files by their, some keywords I placed with them, and etc. And all these things are concepts that the catalog helps us so that we can better locate each file and not have to go searching for it manually. So let's go take a look in the catalog today at some different ways of how we can organize and look for our photographs on our computer. Let's take a look. Okay, let's use a generic library as an example. Most of you probably have some kind of mini version of this at home, and I'm not bashful at all at admitting that mine looks nothing like this and it looks like a complete mess. Uh, I can still find my way around it, but it doesn't look anything like this. Well, it'd be a lot easier if I could place a request when I'm looking for something, like only show me everything that's printed in 2018. And the result would be great, as if it was like this, then we'd only see what we wanted to, just like this example. Um, now let's specify it a bit and take it further. Let's say that now we want to see only children's books. So you just type in those parameters, and abracadabra, boom! Now we can see only kids' literature. That is in our library. Okay, so I don't think that filtering your books like this at home is actually ever going to be a reality, ever, but you get where I'm going with this. So let's go take a look at how we can implement this idea in Zona Photo Studio. Let's go over a practical way the catalog saves us time by using the calendar view. Let's say we're looking for a particular photograph, but we're not sure when we actually took it. In most cases, we've got some small recollection of when it probably was, and uh, in this example, or in our case, let's say that it was again 2018. So let's click on the year, and here in the middle, you'll see the individual months containing the photographs that were taken in that time period. But say we don't exactly remember which month it was, and in this case, it would really help to see all of the photos from 2018. To see that, move here to the search box, and then click on Include Subfolders. Notice how we've got a plethora of photographs that we took during 2018 without any specifics like which month they were taken. The folders appearing as years here in the catalog aren't actual folders that exist, and that's the benefit of the catalog. No additional folders need to be created, as well as any chance of duplicating our data. And Zoner Photo Studio is merely just showing us folders that we already have, just from a different point of view. And in this case, it's displayed as years. All of this information is being sourced from metadata, which is stored inside each and every photograph. If you want to know the folder to which a particular photograph belongs to, just right click and select go to file location. And notice its location appears in the catalog here. And if we click on the arrows right here, the catalog will highlight and show us exactly where the file is contained. Notice there are also some specialized folders here in the catalog. If we want, we can add them and any others into our favorites so that we have quick access to them. Personally, I like to have quick access to photos from the last seven days, and so we just have to right click and select Add to Favorites. Keep or change the name, that's up to you, and then hit OK. And then you'll find this folder up here in your favorite section. In the same way that we can view files by the date they were taken, we can also find photos based on where they were physically taken. So let's take a look at a map and make a command like, show me all of the locations that I've taken pictures. Now the map will simply show me all of the places we visited and photographed. This animation shows us pictures by countries, 
but we can get much more precise inside Zoner Photo Studio. Okay, I'd like to find a photograph that I took here in the Czech Republic. It'll be similar to viewing as we did before in the calendar view, except that this time we'll open the folder location view. Notice that here we've got a preview of all the locations that Zoner Photo Studio registers from the imported information provided by individual photographs. And when I click on Czech Republic, notice that now we've got an entire list of photographs in the browser that were taken in this country. This is also because we've got the option include subfolders turned on. When we turn it off, we'll get a much more refined folder selection with counties in the region. Okay, so up here in the browser drop down menu, we can select the map view. And because we've already selected Czech Republic, the map opens up displaying the country and the spots where particular photos were taken. Another way of putting this is the photos on the map correspond with the photos in our film strip. We can also very simply manually zoom in and out, but when we click here, on the fit the map view to all files in the folder, then the map will expand or zoom in to reveal all of the photographs corresponding to the geographic folder they're in, and of course, their actual location. Notice we also have the option track selection checked. And so if we select a photograph in the film strip like this one, a more detailed location view will automatically pop up on the map. Now let's click on another one and watch the map view respond to our newly selected photograph. Now often location is not assigned automatically to photographs. Newer cameras do have this setting turned on, but it just depends on what camera you're using. So feel free to check out the settings in your camera. But a simple way to bypass this and to manually add this information so that Zoner Photo Studio recognizes where to place your photographs on a map. Um, there are a few couple ways of doing it, but one easy way of doing it is like this. Select all the photographs you want to assign a location to. And as soon as you have them selected, go back to the map view. And in the search query, add the name of the place you, where you took the photos, zoom in, and then simply drag and drop our selected photos onto the map where you want them. Okay, so I hope you added another tool to your catalog toolkit. If you like this video, be sure to check out our other videos on the catalog, and I hope to see you next time. Take it easy.